Three Sons. Starring Fred McMurray. And as Uncle Charlie, William Demarest. It's late and my stomach's yelling. <laughs> you go on in the kitchen and have Uncle Charlie fix you a sandwich. You don't suppose anything's happened to the children, do you? Uh, got to stop thinking of them as children. Uh, no. Uh, is Tom going to come by later? I don't think so. He, uh, he said the meeting would last all day. Maybe, uh, maybe Chip had a flat tire, hmm? Why isn't Polly's father here? Well, he had to go to an important meeting, Dodie. He's missing my sign. Yeah, well, we'll tell him about it. Okay, Dodie, here you are. Time to take a nap, then. Thank you, Daddy. You really think that William's had a meeting, Steve? Yes. I mean, uh, you know, a guy should be here when his daughter gets back from a honeymoon. Well, Charlie, when a man tells me he has to go to an important meeting, I believe him. Well, do you want to know what I think? No. <laughs> Steve, you're the most frustrating man I ever met. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Moonburn. You know something? There are worried vibrations in this room. Yeah, nobody's worried. Chip and Polly didn't know we were going to give them a surprise welcome, so they just took their time. Took their time? What'd they do, come by the way of Arizona? <laughs> of course, that uh, car of Chip's could have broken down again. Think we ought to call the police or something? That's the dumbest thing I've heard all night. Now, what would the police do? California Highway Patrol? Well, this is Mr. Stephen Douglas. Uh, I don't know your procedure, so I don't know if this is a silly question, but... Uh, yes. Uh, well, my son and his uh, new wife are, are several hours overdue. They're supposed to uh, uh, be coming from a place called Puerto Munoz. Uh, yes, well, they were supposed to leave about 8 o'clock this morning. Yeah! Oh, they're here! They're here! Ben, we were getting a little worried about you. We stopped off at Laguna and went swimming. You went swimming? <laughs> well, you're home. That's the main thing. Where's Papa? Uh, he, uh, he had a very important meeting, honey. Yeah. Well, let's not stand out here. Let's go in the other room where we can talk. Yeah. Are you going to need this football? Yeah. 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 The married guys at the door play ball while the girls make dinner. Well, Chipper, I uh, saw your car in the driveway with all your things in it. You're uh, moving out already. Yeah, we put in our reservations for the dorm before we got married and it came through this morning. How about the softball? Yeah, I'll need that too. <laughs> I didn't realize that after you got married, you had to stay in shape. <laughs> Where's Polly, Chip? Well, she's over at the dorm fixing up our room. Man, is it neat, Dad. Yeah. Well, uh, can I give you a hand? Oh, no, thanks. This is the last of it. I'll just throw this junk in my car and take off. Come on, Aaron. Oh, hi, honey. I didn't hear you come home. All right. Oh, another one gone. Is that what you think? Yeah. One by one. I guess you can have it. Oh, thanks. Hey, wait a minute. 
You don't play tennis. <laughs> well, I could trade it off for something I want. <sighs> hey, Chip, uh, you could just sleep in the dorm tonight? Here? At last, you got the room all to yourself. Oh, I didn't mean that. And what are you talking about? I don't know. It's kind of permanent. I mean, well, I don't need the room that bad. Hey, come on, Ern. Yeah. I guess it's kind of dumb to shake hands, huh? What's dumb about it? Say goodbye to Mom and Dad, Uncle Charlie and Dodie. And Tramp. And Tramp. You forgot these, Chip. Oh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Dad. I think he's gonna ball in a minute. <sighs> Me too. We won't say goodbye, Chip. You're not going to be that far away. I should say not. Oh, I'll tell Charlie and Dodie you've left, and you better get going before I shed those female tears that women are so famous for. We'll call you guys as soon as we get a phone in. And Polly wants to have you over for dinner. Good. See ya. Bring it over and we'll play sometime, okay? <laughs> look, darling, I got the drapes up all by myself. Oh, they look great. Oh, and another thing, the phone was never disconnected, and so all I had to do was call the phone company. Listen. Man. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Do you want to carry me over the threshold? You believe in that, Jess? Not really. For some reason, I'd like to be carried over my new threshold. Okay, come on. There you go. Feel better? No, because if I felt any better, I'd buzz. Oh, our first phone call. Who knows the number? My mother. I called her first thing. Hi, Mama. Because you're the only one who knows the number. Well, Chip hasn't even had a chance to call his parents yet. What did Papa say when you told him about the dorm? He hasn't? Well, anyway, tell him that I want the two of you to come over for dinner as soon as I learn to cook something. You better invite him over sooner than that. <laughs> Chip's so funny. Did you hear what he just said? <laughs> yes, honey. He's a wonderful boy, and I'm so glad you're so happy. Fine, dear. Yeah, well, I I'll call you tomorrow, hmm? Oh, I'm sure your father will call, too. Okay. Bye-bye. Tom, how long do you think I can go on lying to Polly? I didn't ask you to lie, Margaret. Why don't you tell her the truth? Oh, no. The person who tells Polly she's being rejected by her father is going to be her father. Now, let's not get dramatic about this thing, Margaret. My daughter eloped. She got married without caring whether I lived or died. Now, you're not going to tell me that she suddenly cares about how I feel. Let's be sensible, Margaret. Let's be sensible. <laughs> It's lined with cedar to take care of the moths and everything. Oh, it's yeah. nice. Good. Yeah. And thanks a lot for the TV, Mom and Dad. I don't know what we'd ever do without it. Well, we just thought it would come in handy. Yeah. You know, why don't you sit down on the couch? I think that's the best place. We think it's pretty comfortable for something that turns into a bed. Yeah, it is. Uh, Polly put up the drapes herself. Oh, well, uh, I'd say you did a very good job, Polly. It was that first day that Chip was moving his stuff from the house. I thought, well, why don't I put the drapes up myself and surprise him? So I did, and he was. <laughs> Well, it's a very comfortable place. 
Well, it's kind of small, but there's just the two of us. Hey, did I show you the refrigerator? Oh, oh let's see that. It's a built-in. All the dorms have them. Huh? Yeah, and is it handy, huh, Polly? Yeah, it's really cool. Well, the minute it stops being cool, we'll have it fixed. <laughs> Chips is the funniest things, you know that? Uh, maybe we better eat. Okay, well, it sure isn't much, but it's a thought that counts. Can I help you? Oh, no, thanks. Why don't you just sit down? Okay, where do you want us, Polly? Well, Dad, you can go right there, I guess. All right. Mom? Yeah, I'll get okay. Thank you, honey. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, solid, huh? Yeah. Got out of the machine on campus. And don't tell her how good the chicken is, because all she did was heat it up. Oh. <laughs> Here. Here. Um, what do you want, uh, white or dark, Polly? I'll help you. Oh, either one is fine. Uh, you forgot to take the plastic off the salad. Oh, sweet. Do you want coffee? Um, now or later, coffee. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll have coffee later without dessert. Oh, you know, I think I forgot dessert. Oh, well, we don't eat dessert anyway. We're on a diet. <laughs> well, uh... Now, may I offer a toast? Does it work without wine? It works better without wine. To Polly and Chip, may they always be as happy as they are right now. <laughs> well, Polly, your grapes are down. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen so much happiness in such a small room. I think I'd have been a self-conscious mess under the same conditions at the same age. Me too. I'd probably have had my bride take the cellophane off the salads and uh, pretend that she'd cooked the chicken. And, uh, well, I would have been wrong. Steve, has Polly's father called him yet? No. Chip says he hasn't. I wonder why. I'll tell you why, Margaret. Because you don't encourage defiance. You don't tell young people that they will be rewarded if they hurt you. Now, she knew exactly how I felt, but she indulged herself. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to go to sleep. Tom, I'd like to ask you something. Do you love her? I thought that might be what you would say, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer your question with a question. Does she love me? Didn't mind the machine salad or the store bought chicken? I know. Well, then what's tearing you up? Your folks are so great. Your mom's great, too. And so's your dad. I wish Papa would come to see me. for some time, dear. He didn't want to disturb you while you were working. Oh, fine. Sit, sit down, Chip. Sit down. Yeah. Yeah, well, how's, uh, how's Pauline? She's fine, Mr. Williams. That's yeah, right. I understand that uh, you two uh, went out of state to get married and went to Mexico on your honeymoon. Yeah, we... Yeah, it's a beautiful country, Mexico. Warm people. I was there once in 1939. This other fellow and I... Uh, Bought a 32 convertible for $20. Took off down the Pan American Highway. Didn't have a West Coast Highway in those days. Had to cross the line at Laredo. Tom, I don't think Chip came over to talk about your trip to Mexico. Margaret, I'm just trying to set everybody at ease. We certainly don't want to shout at one another, do we, Chip? Uh, no, sir. See, Margaret, uh, Chip is a college man with a wife. He knows these things. All right, we'll get to the subject. Uh, Chip, you explained to Pauline that I'm, uh, 
I'm not cutting her out of my life. Nothing dramatic like that. You're not? No, you see, uh, Chip, she hurt me. You both hurt me, for that matter. I'm simply waiting for the wound to heal. Oh, my. Uh, my wife uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't agree with my thinking, Chip. Perhaps you will. Uh, let's say that, uh, well, let's say that you're a father, right? You, you have a daughter. She's your only daughter. You, uh, you try to teach her right from wrong. You, uh, build her character, give her a set of values, and then... One day, while she's still too young to know better, she... She disavows you. Now, my love, my love, which I have given so freely, has been turned aside. But she thinks you don't love her, Mr. Williams. I love her, Chip. I, I told you that. It's not a question of that. It's a question of who loves who. Don't you agree? I don't know what you mean. Tom, the boy came over to ask you to see your daughter. Now, please don't confuse the issue with a lot of nonsense. All right, you, you tell Pauline this. You tell Pauline that, uh, that her papa loves her, of course. But he wants her to know how hurt he is. Don't you miss her? Of course I miss her. That isn't the point. Look, you, you're probably thinking I'm a very selfish man. Well, you, you think in a different direction, son. You ask yourself, who is the most selfish? Now, you ask yourself that question and see if you don't come up with a different answer. Sometimes she cries at night, Mr. Williams. Yeah, well, thank you for coming by, Chip. You, uh... You explain everything to Pauline. Okay, Mr. Williams. Bye, Mom. Good night, Jeff. That boy called you a terrible name just now. Margaret, we had a very unemotional talk. What terrible name? Your son-in-law called you Mr. Williams. Polly. You know something, Chip? We have a perfect life. Yeah, we do. Except for one thing. Polly, that's what I want to talk to you about. You've got to quit worrying about your dad. Well, it's okay. I'm making the adjustment. What kind of an adjustment? Well, I'm facing all the facts. Your parents like me. My mother likes me. Your brothers and Uncle Charlie like me. Even Tramp likes me. Seven out of eight's not so bad. But your dad likes you, too. He loves you, honest. You're sweet, Doug. I'm gonna go to sleep, okay? I can have to keep my eyes open. Something I better tell you. That's weird. It's kind of late for callers. Mr. Williams. Uh, hello, Richard. Papa. Hello, oh, Pauline. Uh, no need. My car broke down about a block from here, and I remembered your mother said this is where you lived. Yeah, this is it. I thought maybe I might use your phone to call the automobile club. Well, oh, sure, sure. Come on in. Thank you. We were just doing a little studying. See? How's Mama? Hmm? Oh, your mother. Your mother is. Uh, your mother's good under all conditions. You know. Me, I'm. Uh, I'm not so lucky. This is it, huh? It's the whole thing. Well, it's just a dorm, Papa. But we've got everything we need. The refrigerator's built in. It's got a Pullman stove, the little dinky oven, and everything. Just the same, I, uh... I 
I see you unpacked everything. Yeah, just about. You said you want to use the phone, Mr. Williams? Thank you. I... I... The number I... My car didn't break down. I think you could call me something besides Mr. Williams. I'll sure work on it, Mr. Williams. I am <laughs> down. <laughs> sure is dead up there. Uh, uh, where are you? Upstairs. Nothing happens. I think it's because Chip went away and wrecked the upstairs fun. Well, we can think of it another way, Dory. Chip fell in love and he got married. And now he's starting a life of his own. And that's why he moved out of the house. Do you understand? Sure. And that's how come he wrecked the upstairs fun. <laughs> well, anybody care for dinner? Okay, honey. Hey, are we in time to eat? Sure. Hey, sure. Oh, well, how oh, well, okay, you do it? Yeah. See you. Okay, if somebody doesn't get in here and eat this dinner, I'm going to throw the whole thing out the window. <laughs> and now I know we're welcome. <laughs> 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 